So here we are, we're going to edit another image. Now this image we have uh, that I took on holiday the other week and in Gran Canaria, if you must know. And this image is quite a nice image, I've already pre-edited it in RAW already, so it's a RAW image. And basically all I've done is I've um, tweaked uh, the exposure a little bit, played with the highlights a little bit, I've brought them back a little bit, but it was quite a dark image anyway. So haven't really done a lot, I've put um, the slightest bit of clarity in and I also like to sharpen in um, raw image anyway so already sharpened, I mean it's a little bit of a noisy image because it was actually taken quite dark uh, and quite late at night, I think it was about 9 o'clock actually as well so it's quite a dark image so a little bit noisy at about 100% I think it was still quite a bit noisy but it doesn't overly matter, you can't really tell. So anyway, we've got the basic our image and what we're going to do in this one is we're just going to play with the image and make um, almost like a faded look and quite a vintagey look again because last time we did uh, quite a summery feel. So uh, in this one we're going to um, yeah, just try and play around with similar techniques as well but maybe applied in a different way. So what we're going to do is we're just going to keep creating and we're going to see what the final product is. There's no final end that I've got in mind so we'll just see. we we'll use a couple of techniques that I'll introduce in here but basically we'll be working with curves again. So on the side menu again, this is CS6 by the way, CS5 is just the same, you can use the same features in there as well and there's not much difference so curves once again. And here we load another curve. Now um, as stated in the last one we're going to use similar kind of curve options again and what I basically like to start is I like to play around with the image and see what colours are in the image itself because if you um, pull in this section you get darker tones come through and sometimes um, it, you play with the image and you can see what's actually there and it um, changes your mind as to how you're going to edit the next image and also if you play up here and you create the contrast you can see kind of where you want to go with the image because I don't know I have a slight idea in mind but not perfectly what I want to do. So we're going to pull down here and we're going to see. So I quite like some of the colours in here. I wanted to make it more of a brighter image but I do quite like some of the colours coming out here. It's a nice bit of hair. The hair looks quite nice. Maybe not so much. So we'll pull that back up a bit. And we'll put it on the screen. So I'm quite liking when that's coming through there. We get quite nice brightness here. Um, but I mean, this doesn't have to be the end of it. We can keep playing around and see what's around as well. So we'll pull that up a bit actually, maybe, and maybe we'll try a brighter look. Um, we'll still use a contrast effect, but what we'll do is we'll make it in such a similar S curve along the line. We'll make it an S curve higher than the line. If it's higher than the line, then you can start to see different effects. So if we bring it down a little bit again, see, so we'll get something. So we're the image quite a lot there. Uh, I quite like what that's doing to the image as well. Um, yeah, it's quite nice. So again, we can play with the opacity as well later on. But what we're going to do is we're just going to keep building and building and building on the layers. Now, should we start with some colour? Now again, what I usually like to do is similar to the last one, we'll play with the blue curves again. Um, like, like the curve adjustment layer before, we're just going to keep pulling and pulling and pulling until we see something we like. Now, I'll start on the top because we want to fill in this dark, this uh, brightness here that doesn't really bring anything to the image. So, pull in this down, we'll make it yellow. So, even now, we're starting to fill the image with a bit of colour and we're bringing that vintage look in. So, uh, and then we're going to do the antagonist option uh, of the yellow and then we're going to create something that we quite like. So we can always got these options here to play with as well. So this is generally a starting ground for a lot of my vintage looks. Just this blue yellow curves because it's generally so good. Um, I quite like where that's going. Okay, yellow again, but again, we'll be building on it again. So now, because I've changed the colours, I might want to look at the layers underneath, see how it affects it again, but still it's quite nice. Um, there's loads of other ways we could darken the images again if we wanted to make a darker image. We don't have to stay with quite a light and airy. Um, there's lots of other options as well, including 
um, different layer blending modes which we've talked on before. So again we could multiply this here and then just set the opacity. And that's going to create a similar effect to the curve adjustment we have, but in a different way. So we can do that, but it's good to play around with all the options. Uh, I do this on every image to just see what's going on, what I quite like. Now that's just bring it out a bit, but on this one I don't think we're going to use it actually. So back to the image again. Um, let's just start to look and see what I think needs to change. So again, we're going to play and start building more layers, and we'll go for the solid color layer this time. And uh, some black already. Um, let's see what kind of image is going to look good. Let's try the pink Gemini and overlay and layers similar to the same method as I used in the last one. The screen blending mode we'll use. I tend to go for quite brighter, brighter like duller co image uh, colors even. Because um, if you go dark, it generally it just wipes out a lot of the rest of the color from the image. So again, we'll go to screen and start to pull that down. I like where that's the end of the image. That's washing it out completely. And it, along with that curves color that we did a minute ago, it's already making quite a nice, quite a nice um quite washiness to it actually. So this is the colour, this is the blue green that we played with a minute ago. So I like what that's doing to it. It's nice enough on its own but it's just filling it out the colours a little bit more. So I always like to play with the layers and see what they're adding to each image so as we go through. So I quite like that. But again now I think I might want to add another layer on top and we'll do curves again but we might want to experiment with the bringing the colours down or bringing them up Let's see what we can do uh, I quite like that actually not too, not too rash, I don't want to go too far up because we're starting to already lose a bit of detail on here which I don't want to do so bringing that down again it's just bringing out a little bit of that washiness that the vintage look brings, but I quite like that again. So, again, looking at this image, see what else we want to do with it. Um, there's literally anything we could do. We've only got the two, three colours in here at the moment that we've added in ourselves, but there's still a great deal we could do. We could also change the sky, see what else we want to do with that, but I'm not sure if that'd be necessary in this one. So, and what we'll try again is we'll add another colour to it. So what we'll do actually is we'll just copy that one, which we know is already quite good. And we'll put that highest and put the opacity up a little bit. But we'll change the colour this time. So just seeing what they're adding to the image as we go through. Again, we're going to stick to quite a paler colour, but maybe quite like that right? almost ice cream colour there. Uh, try that. See what that does. Obviously, it might not work at all. Might pull away a lot of information. There we go. I'm quite like that. And um, we can also, again, always make sure when you um, are playing with the images that you look at the other blending modes because a lot of the time they can add something different. Whereas I generally quite like to stick with. Uh, let's see what that does to it. Wiping it out quite a bit again overlay is exactly the same. So what we'll do is we'll still stick to the screen. It's always good to test the different modes. Well, I'm not sure if that's colours working. I quite like the the pale pink that we had there, so maybe we'll try something similar lines. And because it's on quite a low opacity already we're gonna see similar effects what we actually are gonna be likely to keep. I don't like the blues. I do like the greens, but we'll try for a bit of a warmer image again. Uh, quite like that green, but I think the peach colour here sealed it again. So again, we'll go with the peach colour. And as we're starting to build up these layers, you can see that we're getting 
a nice like build up of colours now. Um, maybe we can always go back and edit any of these as we go through. Let's see. Let's see the areas around here that's editing here. Let's see what we can do. I think I'm going to stick roughly with that. I don't want to add too much blue in because it takes away from a lot of the colour, so we're going to keep it quite similar actually. Um, once again, we might go back and just pull it down a bit darker because every screen image that I'm at, screen layer that I'm adding on, is pulling a bit of information out of the image, making it all a bit lighter as well. So if we keep adding them, they'll just keep getting lighter. But I quite like that. Right, so what I'd like to do now is we're just going to layer all these up again. I'm uh, holding shift here and clicking on the layers. Um, so we've got the final. So already we've got a massive, massive difference. And we've got much, much brighter image. But we haven't really gone over the top at all. But it's quite nice and vintagey here. Now I quite like, a lot of people doing at the moment, this extra, this lack of shadow almost. The colours that have been added to the shadows, but the layers we've added bring and it's quite a like a fuzzy fade almost on the images so what we're going to do is we're going to add that ourselves to the image and there's loads and loads and loads of different ways you can do this but this is one of them so we're going to create another curves layer building everything on curves again and just in the standard rgb so it's editing the light and the dark we could pull this up And the antagonist option again is pulling it down, mutes the highlights. So a lot of people quite into this kind of look at the moment. And then pulling in the middle will start to bring the image back to where you want it to be. Obviously this is quite extreme. Pull that down a bit. And you see here where the shadows are being directly affected by the action. But there's also a lot of other ways you can do this kind of approach to adding a fuzzy film. So uh, uh, another option would be to um, play with the exposure. So clicking on the exposure and now there's the exposure option here which I don't ever like to touch really because I feel it ruins the image. Um, doesn't change it the same way that raw editor changes it. I think if anything it ruins it creates a fade on it which I don't overly like put a zero in there but the offset editor is another way of doing it no, I quite like this because uh, we'll set it a little bit higher I quite like that now again layer below and just bring it back down and I'm going to start to see the effect of this exposure there. So it's already got a massive effect. But yeah, these are all options we can try as well. And I'm obviously again playing with that. So I quite like where that's going actually. Yeah, it's not too bad, not too harsh. We want to keep it quite subtle because it's already a light image anyway. Um, I'll potentially bring it down a little bit. Yeah, I quite like that. It's quite rich, but I mean, we haven't added a great deal of colour, but we've created a completely, completely vintage look to it already, much more than we had in the beginning. It's completely different, and it's a lot brighter. So for an image that's taken at night time, you'd never be able to tell. And it was much darker than this as well when we added when I messed before with the camera raw editor. So we've really changed the image a great deal. So there, here we go. Just a little look at what we've done already. We've really, really, really changed the image a lot. But this isn't everything we can do. These are just a couple of settings that I've played around with today and we've been able to see work directly. But, I mean, that's not everything. These colours are just ones I've picked out at random. But we could always change this afterwards. Now we could put, we could go for a different approach. We could go for that tealy colour we were looking at. Let's completely change the image again. If we got rid of the pink as well, we could maybe 
change them completely. And suddenly now we've got almost a Transformers look like I did here. So there's a lot to play with here. You really just need to get in and play. And a lot of my editing in particular is just playing with different colour modes, um, experimenting. And every time I go into Photoshop, I try to use something I haven't used before. So everywhere, I mean, we've got a curves adjustment here. Um, that's just something I usually use, but maybe if we grab here, we'll add something else to the image, you know, let's start to change the colours a little bit here, and mute it down. There's lots of lots of ways that you can change this and manipulate it in ways that you wouldn't really have thought of before. So every time I go into Photoshop, that's the kind of experimenting I want to do. So already again there, we've got a completely different image than the one before. So moving backwards back to our old image. Uh, I quite like what we've done there. It's quite nice. I quite like the green look there actually. But anyway, yeah, there's some food for thought. There's a lot of different adjustments here and there's lots of different methods. Um, working off the basic principles that we had before, just building curve layers and adding extra colours into it. Um, I hope you like this tutorial and um, please visit my website at www.danwall.co.uk. I'm also on Facebook as well. Thank you.